Hey, I'm John Grease III. I'm the founder of Garage Zoom Life. And as you guys know, I love talking to home gym owners. And I have got a treat for you guys. I'm going to be talking to Aaron White. Aaron is the owner of the White Box Dubai, which is an awesome, awesome home gym. But Aaron has recently had a little bit of change in life circumstances that's caused him to downsize from that awesome, fully equipped gym that we see on social media down to a basic balcony gym setup. And I cannot wait to talk about that. Aaron, thank you for joining me here today. Hey, it's an absolute pleasure, John. I've been watching your podcast for ages. So it's great to make an appearance. Oh, man, thank you. So let me just start by saying thank you so much for watching my content. I appreciate that. And I appreciate all of you guys who are watching. Please, if this is your first time on my channel, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button because I'm trying to get to 20,000 subscribers and I need your help to do it. Subscribing is free, but it would mean so much to me if you guys could help me get to that goal. All right, Aaron, let us go ahead and check out your new setup. The, let's call it the White Box 2.0, or, or is it White Box one and a half? I don't know, but it's uh, it's uh, certainly a much less than it was. We're, we have a, an apartment in Singapore, and it has a pretty large balcony. So it's uh, a bit of a rainy, rainy day in Singapore, um, and that was one of the main considerations I had from some of the, the gear selection because I knew hey it's pretty humid here and it rains a lot so that's um, what I was thinking about is like whenever you're you're in a situation where it's going to be very very rainy I mean obviously there's a, a roof where you are but yep. you know rain doesn't always go straight down sometimes it goes sideways you know and so yeah, you have to deal with that it's a little bit sheltered on this side of the terrace it's kind of an L shape and that's but, why we chose it here so Hopefully you can see that there. This is the nice. Alico, call it a light squat stand, but it's galvanized for outdoor use. Okay. So it was a very specific pick. It comes with the safety arms, um, obviously the J hooks. Uh, so that, that's that's pretty good. And it, I got it actually um, X demo, X stock. So the pricing was okay. okay. And it came from Malaysia, not so far away. Okay, um, now that is not the bench that you have at home. Well, the, the bench press cage I have is yeah. custom and oh, it has okay. a piece of that pad on it. Yeah. I also have a, an Alico adjustable bench at home as well. Okay. Uh, all those kind of bro gains and dumbbell work. But over here I have an Alico classic flat bench and it's got a bench cover on it just to protect it from the elements. Now, did you buy this bench specifically because you knew you were going to be moving? Yeah, so the bench was from the same supplier as, as the squat stand, so that that made it pretty pretty easy. Oh. It's pretty grippy, so it kind of feels similar to okay. a Thompson fat pad. It's got a head protector there, and it's on there, right? And when I've been yeah. with the bench I've done so far, it's it's got a good grip for me. I wear the old A7 bench shirt. Sure. I'm not really going anywhere when, I, when I'm benching. Does it affect you when you're getting your arch because that cover isn't completely tight? There's a little bit of looseness. Does it affect you at all? Or do you have to tighten it at all? Yeah, I, I probably would need to tighten it now and then, but um, I've just put it on recently just to protect it from the elements. Sure. Easy to take off. There's just three straps underneath, just uh, snap buckles. Oh, oh, so you don't actually bench with it on, with the cover on there. You take it off, well, work out. No, and I, I can take it on, take it off, just dep depending oh, on. Oh, I got you. Okay. The conditions here, because if it's really humid, I'm probably going to keep it on. If it's less gotcha. humid, less sweaty, I'll just take it off and we can bench away. So yeah. when there's a lot of humidity, equipment sweats, you know, so like you have moisture, so there'll be moisture mm. raised up on the on all the metal surfaces. There'll yep. be moisture on that pad. So yep. at that time, does it become slick or does it still stay grippy? On the pad, it's pretty, I've not really experienced much slickness at all. Um, okay. While it's been pretty humid, it is much, a bit drier this side. But I was mainly concerned about the barbell um, being okay. a bit slick, but the Alika one I have here, which is their new training stainless steel power bar, mm. has no blemishes, no patina, feels solid on my back, in my hands, feels good. That's what so, matters. That's what matters. Feels very lucky. And I mean, you know, if you have a high quality barbell, it's going to take some abuse. So like, for example, here in the States, you've got the York barbells that were made by York Barbell yeah. <laughs> in, uh, in Pennsylvania, and that's in the 40s. So it's very common to go to maybe a yard sale or something like that. And you'll see someone who is selling their grandfather's or great grandfather's old York barbell that was in a shed somewhere. They dug it out and they're like, oh, nobody uses this thing. Let's sell it. You get it. You take it home. You, can eat, you don't even have to take the rust off. It works just fine because it's a high quality bar. 
Um, you don't have to worry so much. I mean, maybe the bearings could use some love, but mm. because they don't usually have that hex bolt down the center, that's the most annoying part of when I used to work at a public gym was every day I have to stick my finger in there or take the Allen key and tighten the hex bolt down. Yep. You don't have to worry about stuff like that with a high quality bar. So mm. obviously Alico is uh, the top of the line. So, you know, I anticipate that you, you'll be just fine. I do want to know, do you deadlift with that bar? I do deadlift with a bar. Flooring that we have on the balcony is actually wooden slats. On top okay. of that, I have 70 mil floor mats by Fit Fitzel Duratrain. They're rated to 400 kilo deadlifts, probably a bit more than I'm ever going to lift. I'm not Larry right. Wells. Um, <laughs> and, and also, just like it. <laughs> well, he did come and lift in a white box one time. So, that yeah, was, yeah. Um, so I've become an expert at Romanian deadlifts, just being very focused right. on eccentric movement okay. as we contact the floor. Some people call them glass floor deadlifts, yeah. um, which means I can't slam things around like I right. might in a white box. So that for me has probably been the, one of the major changes in my training because it right. affects how I would how I've been training for seven, eight years with, with deadlifting. So Have I just, you purchased I'm just anything like a silencer pad or anything, like silencer pads or anything like that? You no, know, I'm just relying, no, I'm just relying on the 70 mil mats. Plus I'm utilizing Leco XF bumpers, which are the big okay. fat ones. Okay. So in terms of noise, not bad vibration. I'm hoping I haven't heard anything yet from the neighbors. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so when I was asking you about whether you deadlift with that bar, Again, this goes back to the moisture. Can, let's take a look at the bar. How yeah. how aggressive is the knurling? And have you seen that the moisture have affected your grip on the deadlifts at all? Or do you just use straps on days when it's raining? Um, typically, I, I prefer to use straps just because I want to protect these pearly whites. But overall, uh, the the bar is holding up really well out here. We, we have a, a, a bit of few light marks here. From, okay. Can you pan uh, just a little bit? Yeah, okay, oh, yeah. There, there, you, there go. you go. Yeah. yeah, there's a few light marks there. Okay. On the smooth surface of the bar, it's still like spank as nice. new. It's really, really good. Okay. What was nice, I actually got an email from Aliko after I'd ordered it. Uh -huh. and, and Oscar over there said, Aaron, you were fast. You were the second globally. Second oh, order wow. globally when they, wow. they did drop. So I was, I was very close to ordering another stainless steel barbell. That came and I was like, man, I've got so much brand loyalty for Aleco that, uh, I, you know, it was, it was an easy option for me. So, and, and just to show you just down here, there's the ammo. Okay. The X plates. We've got some volcano change plates. I have some dumbbell handles kicking around okay. um, for, for some of that. So it's pretty basic. I've got 12 tiles. Total was about 150 kilos in weight just for the tiles from Dubai so okay. that was a mission um and I've, I've got about 200 kilo in XF bump much the bar can take um with the, with the width of those plates it looks like the plate block is a little bit thinner which means that you've got more usable sleeve yeah. length so yeah. how many Definitely. bumpers could you say again are you able to sit on there like how much weight are you able to fit on the bar so with the setup I have today I could get 200 kilos so okay. that's four 20s plus a 10 each side and just okay. about squeeze collars on. Okay. Um, I have my plan as well is if I really need to get heavy, I'll buy a couple of metal 25s uh, lo in the local market here or, okay. or even slimmer 25 kilo bumpers, which should give enough range up to the level of training I'm at. Granted, 400 kilos is over 800 pounds, but... No, no, 200 kilos. So that's what you're looking at. 400, 200 kilos. Oh, yeah, okay. I believe pounds. in you, Aaron. <laughs> So that, so that's actually 400 something pounds. Okay. Yeah. That's still 440. But like you just said, you're actually having to deadlift a lot more deliberately, having yep. to go a little bit slower, maintaining tension. And yep. so that's probably more than enough weight for you. And I mean, to be honest with you, this is probably going to end up being good for you because when you go back home, yep. uh, after your time in seven four is done, or if you go to a competition or something, you'll be fine that you're able to stay tight for longer with at heavier weights because you've trained your body, you've trained your core a little bit with that. Yeah, that's right. What I found is that so long as um we get we're heavier on the squats, yeah, the deadlifts kind of will drag along just so long as I'm getting some time under tension. Right. Um, so it's just a little bit of programming adjust, adjustment I'm doing with my coach. 
just just to get the balance right. One thing um, that I'm kind of missing a lot, I don't know, is is cables, right? So I have a cable machine in the white box. And in the community gym downstairs, there is a, a decent cable machine in there. Okay. Um, so that that was the only give that you know I have to maybe go downstairs and and. Uh, I have to be Come around people. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, but then the thing is, there's hardly anybody ever in there, so oh, it's alright just to get just to get that, that accessory working. Let's talk about the mental side of things. We were talking a little bit before the interview started, where I was asking you what it was like to leave and come here, and to have such a, a drastic change from what you were accustomed to. So, for anyone who happens to not know about the white box as you just said larry wheels has worked out there your gym is well known around the world people know the white box you know and so you went from that gorgeous setup some of the equipment ha has person has the white box on it it's like you know this this it's obviously something that you've curated over the years you've got everything just custom tailored to you and then you had to start all over and not just start all over but go to a bare bones setup yep. how was that emotionally for you honestly it was hard because eight nine years the white box has grown as as the garage gym equipment and availability grew as an industry yeah. uh, and also as as my taste and requirement as a lifter changed yeah. and you suddenly realize when you when you get in a bare bones situation that actually one the important thing is around your technique again yeah. you can't let the equipment dictate dictate that you really have to focus on it and right. b it makes me grateful for what i did have so okay. when i do get go back to the white, white box um i get to lift you don't it, take it for granted anymore yeah i don't take it for granted because before you just be like that ah, i've had it for yeah. so long yeah, yeah. It's, it's great but uh, i think the other, the other thing as well is that you have to be a little bit creative when you have li less equipment all right, so you know, go downstairs, do your cables. What more accessory work can I do with dumbbells? What other pause techniques or, or pause variations or, or tempo work can I do because I don't have access to bands or other accessory stuff that I've mm -hmm. just got oodles of in the white box, right? So, um, so you don't yeah. do any band work now? I'm not, I don't actually have band pegs, right? So maybe well, that's no, a, I mean, like, so, like, uh, for example, you know the the thing where you de you put like the bands on the ends of the bar and you stand on the bands. Yeah, uh, I didn't have bands. It's it's probably something that that may. There's a few things I'm like I'm thinking now I'm here. Yeah, so bands is probably one. I'm really contemplating getting a safety squat bar because of the variations it can offer. Right. So there's one or two things I'd like to add, but I think the major priority in the in the move was just to get an area. Something. Big three lifts in and some dumbbells right. I can get some accessory work with. Um, which I've achieved. But I think the other major factor is, you know, in the white box, despite it being in Dubai, that's an air conditioned environment where I can yeah. at perfectly control the temperature. Here You're in the middle of it. Or is steamy <laughs> AF, right? So yeah. What's the best time of the day for you to train? Then? I've always liked to train early in the morning um, before breakfast. Okay. The issue with it here is the way the orientation is, the sun is coming straight in first oh, thing wow. in the morning onto the rack. Oh, so I was yeah. training earlier this week, just some light squats, and I was super fatigued after it, mainly right. because of the, uh, the sun and the weather conditions. It was probably in approaching 90F. Okay. In the 90s, at that, that point in time, eight in the morning. That's horrendous. So it's, okay. <laughs> it's, it's pretty brutal. Um, wow. I think the other thing around that is it makes me want to be way more efficient in terms of the time I'm out here. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Where so, you know, white box sessions, it didn't matter. One hour, right. 20 minutes, two hours. Yeah. But here, I want to be done and dusted in 45 minutes. Let's get a look just kind of out over your balcony. Okay. So, so my question isn't going to apply then. But what I was going to ask you is, um, because I saw buildings in the background, I said, have you ever like made eye contact with somebody while you're squatting? You turn around, <laughs> you're squatting, and you look up, and there's somebody like this with the binoculars, like, what is he doing? Uh? <laughs> I'm sure there's some dudes do it, or some people looking, but... Uh, like, trying to figure know, out what's going on with that. I can't see. <laughs> the, the buildings are pretty far away in the distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, okay. um, but it is an inspiring view to work out. It is. Runner. Just went home on vacation, yep. and you got to train at the white box again. Did you find that your training at the white box was different because you've been at the balcony for so long? Yeah, I went. I went ham on the deadlifts. So, <laughs> <laughs> I 
so, so that was probably the major difference because I'm restricted <laughs> at the moment. And the other thing is, is you know, getting older, el uh, elbows and shoulder joints. And I, yeah. you know, I typically prefer squatting with a safety squat bar. Um, now coming back to to the balcony, just having the straight bar. It also takes me back to the fundamentals of what a good squat looks like or what a good bench press mm. looks like without having all sorts of cool things to play with okay. in the white box, right? Now, typically I ask people whenever they buy equipment, I say, you know, you know, what brand is that? Why did you purchase it? I, I mean, you've got Elico. It kind of speaks for itself. You know, if people don't know, anyone watching this who doesn't know, Elico is such a legendary brand in the home gym community. I'll tell you this, if you're watching this, you want to know like the pedigree of Elico. Elico came up with the idea of putting knurling on a bar. And uh, they, I think the story I heard was that it was based off of a waffle iron. Correct. That's where they got the pattern from. Before Elico bars, there was no knurling on the bars. Okay. So that tells you how ingrained in the, in the history and culture of, of lifting they are. So let me ask you this though. Have you ever considered using brands other than Elico? Yeah, I mean, if you if you look in the white box, there's many flavors of barbell there. Many rogue bars. Many uh, got some American barbell, uh, some Kabuki ones. Uh, so, that, uh, ooh, what else have I got? Texas, Texas, a couple of Texas bars as well. Right. And that became kind of a a hobby collecting barbells and use, use, using them when I could, and some rogue ones sure. too. But when it comes down to, okay, you're going to bring one, mm. right? Yeah. My That's decision was a lot. Was but a that wasn't even a bar that you owned. That's the thing I'm saying is like, <laughs> you already own a wall full of bars. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I can only have one. I'm going to buy a new bar. <laughs> of course. Of course I'm going to buy a new bar. But actually, I, let, let, me, let me tell you that some of the, the background about, about that. So I can't, I'm not shipping a container to Singapore. So mm. everything is coming on a, an airplane with me or I'm buying locally. Okay. So when I put, put the bar, okay, and it was actually, it was going to be the Cerakote higher power bar, Rogue, into the tube, and then considered how I was going to get that to the airport, check it in, mm. get it from the other side, get it. I was just like, okay. Yeah, that just went into the too hard box. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> where I, was, I could click a few buttons and then a couple of weeks later, It'll meet bar. me there. That's fine. Yeah, it'll yeah. meet me there. So that was that my thing. But the, I did bring over some plates. I did bring over all the mats, the bench and the rack I, I acquired right. locally. How is it, um, obviously, you know, you're able to get stuff from Elico pretty easily, but you're the second person who I've interviewed that's got a gym, a home gym in Singapore. So what is it like in terms of wait times for shipping if you want to order something? Yeah, so just like Dubai, um, probably five to 10 days. And then if, if that's from Aliko, and if I was ordering Rogue, it's probably a similar time frame that a ship into Singapore is, wow. Oh, right? wow. So okay. It was already expensive to Dubai, uh, but it's Singapore even more so. So what I'm able to do is balance off the slightly higher cost of the bar, for instance, in this case, versus yeah. cheaper shipping costs. So it, okay. it's a kind of a wash. Right. So, uh, yeah. Um, so in the end, I was like, man, if I'm going to live with one bar, I'm going to live with Malika. So that was the decision made. I just needed to be stable. You, you ordering from Rogue Europe, I'm assuming? Well, Rogue Europe and Rogue Australia have a very limited selection okay. versus Rogue USA. So you normally get your stuff from the US if it's yeah, not like I mean, Yeah, but I've been ordering Rogue. I've been buying from the US direct online. Okay. And uh, the UPS guy is cursing me when he turns up at my house. Do you ever order from companies like Sam's Fitness in Australia? Um, no, never tried Sam's Fitness in Aussie, but certainly I think not bad, not bad shout if I, if I need something. I'm okay. currently just- I mean, just for like them. smaller stuff or just whatever, just- I mean, there's a Decathlon sports store just down the road here and they carry okay. just the basics um, okay. that I, I might need. Um, but I think the great thing about garage gyms is, is doing the shopping, right? Of uh, course. Well, could we do this? Could it be that one? Yeah. reading the reviews and uh and then the more complex thing around acquisition happens after yeah that actually answers another question i understand and i get it but i know that there's some people who are watching this who'd be like why don't you just get a gym membership at a public gym 
while you're living in Singapore. But I can understand too, number one, you just lose all of the flexibility that you had by having a home gym. You just gave that up. And then I don't know what traffic is like in Singapore, but I know in a lot of Asian countries, it's not the best. So, you know, the commute to a gym here in the U.S. might be anywhere from five minutes to an hour to two hours, but it may be double that, you know, in Singapore if there's a bad traffic day. That's absolutely true. The other thing is, is that from a powerlifting perspective, your choices are comparatively limited in Singapore, Mm -hmm. right? So there's a lot of like more mainstream type gyms that cater right. to them to the mass public and there's loads of them around me. Yeah. Um, but if I'm looking for a squat rack, some plates and somewhere to deadlift, yeah. that, yeah. that limits the selection. So tell me something that you really value about your current setup. Yeah. The fact that I can get up, get my lift on, get to the office. And you know, I've, I'm a dad, I've got two, two young girls and my time to be close to them is more than any anything that I could. I can't replace that time, and they can come. They come out and I'll watch me lift, or they understand Daddy's lifting, and the ability not to have to do that commute for, let's say, even if it was thirty minutes each way, I'd rather spend the time with the girls. So and, and also, the point. Okay. yeah, you better add that too. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Gonna add that, probably yeah. watching, gonna watch this later, and I'm gonna <laughs> be in all sorts of trouble as per normal. You're still gonna get in trouble because you're gonna say, "Oh, so you kind of you almost forgot me, didn't you?" That's funny. <laughs> I want people to be able to keep up with your training. I want them to be able to reach out to you if they have questions. Maybe they're in a similar situation. They want to set up their own balcony gym, or maybe they're just curious about Elico products. And you're obviously the guy to go to because you've got a long-standing history with the company. So. Tell everybody how they can get in touch with you and how they can follow your training. Yeah, sure. So um, Ronsky underscore lifts is kind of my main IG. Uh, the white box Dubai is the home gym in Dubai, which probably we start to see a bit more content from Singapore there as I add a few bits and pieces there. So um, I'm pretty good on DMs. So do shoot me one if you, if you have any questions. Happy to help the community.